Well, hello. Hi, everybody. Oh, my goodness. We've got lots of folks here in the chat already. Hey, everybody. Hi, I'm Becky from Power Tools with Thread, and you are in our Stitchuation Room. This is a Monday through Friday daily stitching retreat. We just hang out here. It's a great way to start our day. And uh, Made by Margie is on her way to Texas for a class for her newish machine. So travel mercies to you, uh, Margie. I um, hope everything goes well. Safe travels. Yeah, Tammy says, don't forget the thumbs up. And Marge says that it is National Pi Day. That's P-I. Her daughter is a math teacher. So in honor of that, I have put pecan pie in the kitchen. So in our virtual kitchen, hop on over there. There's coffee, juice, lots of goodies. You like my purple shirt? My purple shirt, this is last year's International Quilt Festival shirt. Yep, picked this up last year. I tried to get it. They were setting up their booth at like Market. So I was there the week prior. And I was trying to get my shirt then that would fit, right? And um, because... All these people come in day one and buy up all their shirts. And uh, so I was like, hey, let me get a shirt. And they said, no, we're not selling until whatever day. And I said, all right, fine. So then I came back and um, all they had left were two X's, which is just going to be really big for me. Is that right? No, that was last year. This year's fits. If this was a 2X, the shoulder seam would be down here. So that was last year. And I said, well, I've got a sewing machine. I can fix that. So I got, I had to get a 2X last year, but this year, so I got this one. We came back early enough that I was able to get the size that I, that I, there is whipped cream for the pie, Bobby, of course, ice cream too, but it's a little early for that. Don't you think? Of course, if you're watching on replay, wander over. It's just for fun. You guys, there's no other website to go to. <laughs> and, um, there's a thumbs up button. As you're walking by, hit the thumbs up button. I'd appreciate it very much. So yesterday, what did we do yesterday? I, I thought I had made that hoppy Easter before. And sure enough, I went digging through my scrap basket. I had made it. Some of y'all even said, oh, yeah, you made that. And here's the day you made it on. Y'all know me better than I do. So I had made it before, but I didn't have enough room at the bottom. I did the same thing that I did last year is I cut the piece too small thinking, you know, height wise. I did the same thing, not last year, last time I made it. And I'm not a fan of the, the, uh, the blanket stitch. It's just too wide apart for my likes. Okay. So and I had some blobbies down here at the bottom of this and everything, but I thought I would go ahead. Yesterday, I didn't get a chance to show you guys how to put on the lettering. So I thought I'd do that today if you want to see it. And then um, I've shown it before, but we always have lots of new viewers here, right? And oh my gosh, we got somebody here from Washington. Good morning, Linda. So you're up early. What is it? Um, 4 a.m., 5 a.m. there? All righty. Uh, so I was going to do that today. And I wanted to show you, I did finish Hoppy Easter yesterday. So I got that done. Didn't that turn out adorable? Look at that. It's adorable. It's great. Okay. This one I used the E stitch, which is the default uh, on Embrilliance. So see, it's. See, it's got long, short, long, short, long, short. That's the E stitch. And I really like that. So I think that turned out better, in my opinion. I just like this better. If I make it with blanket stitches, how do you go back and change it to different stitches? You have to jump back into Stitch Artist. You got. I always tell y'all to save your... Save your, where it says save as stitch and working, always save that working file because you, in the working file, you can go back and change anything you want. 
once it's a stitch file, it's a stitch file. And editing a stitch file is difficult. So you want to do that. Your stitch file is your embroidery file. So, all right. I have got some news. I need, I need you guys to get out your calendars and save the date. There's going to be another sew and sail cruise for 2025. Are you ready? So it, no, not the PRS file, sweetie. It's the BE file. Allison, the, it's the PRS is the PRS. I, I don't know what that is. I, the working file in brilliance is BE. Okay. So I'm going to be teaching on another sew and sail cruise May 4th through the 11th of 2025. And it's out of Galveston. So you Texas girls and Louisiana, come on, all my locals. We can make a, a good time out of that. It will be on Royal, okay? And that's all I know for right now. So it's the, the 4th through the 11th of 2025. I don't know what we're going to be doing. I don't have a clue. I just show up and go, okay, you guys tell me what you want me to do. Okay, yeah, save some money. Oh, good, Margie, you're driving. I hope you're not driving. I hope you're in the passenger seat. Yeah, so... That will be a lot of fun, and it's in May, and I'm sure it's it's either Eastern or West, Western Caribbean, obviously. I don't know which one it would be. Don't care. I haven't looked on their website. I'm sure it's there, but uh, just save the date. And then as we get, I don't even know which sew and sale that's going to be. I have no clue. So just FYI, it's in May, Allison, the 4th to the 11th of May, 2025. Just save the date. And so we're 14 months out now, you guys, as we get closer, of course, I will give more information and tell you when you can sign up and all of that, but just put a block. You're not driving at the moment. Okay, good. <laughs> just put a block on your calendar, 4 through 11 May. I was so excited when Jamie called me about that yesterday. I said, yes, I'd love to. That would be great. It'll be fun. Yeah. On the calendar. Good, good, good. That's great. You know what, Vicki? She says if she didn't get so seasick, she would be there. I get that patch behind my ear. The scopolamine patch works great. That works really, really well for me. Yeah. All righty, you guys. So I wanted to do two things. Well, yesterday, a couple of folks had mentioned they had never seen that triangle hanging sleeve. I learned this from uh, a viewer told me about it. Um, Myra at So Very Easy does this. You just take a square of fabric, fold it into a triangle and fold it into a triangle again, and then attach the raw edge up under the binding. Okay. And then all I have to do is take a needle and thread. This is the only time you will see me hand stitch and just stitch this little piece of it right here. And then once that little tip is stitched down, it just will hang and fit real nice on a little hanging thing. I don't have a hanging thing for this size. I need to get the small one. I have a little bit bigger one and it looks goofy on there. So this one is still current. But this turned out fine. That turned out adorable. Even though, see, I didn't leave room at the bottom again. So I just stuck it up top and let the letters hop, be on the tail. It works fine. But I was going to show you guys how I did that. What airport would you fly into? Doreen, it'll be Houston. And Southwest flies into Houston Hobby. And then it's not too far from Hobby down to Galveston to just get on the boat. It'd be great. Yeah. So you can overnight in, um, in Galveston if you want. They've got hotels galore down there. <clears throat> and when the information comes out on that, so if you want to fly in, what time does that ship depart? Like 4 p.m.? I think you could fly in in the morning if you can get a flight into Hobby. And Southwest flies into Hobby if you want to do that. Houston International is farther away. So Hobby's closest. That's down on the southeast side. And either one is fine. And then they have shuttles that will run you down to um, the ports too. So you don't fly? Okay. Oh, I did forget the eyes. Dang it. <laughs> Thanks, Carl, Eddie. <laughs> I have a blind rabbit. 
I can fix that. Dang, I did forget the eyes. You're right. <laughs> oh my goodness. So um, those of you just think about it, you know, put it on your calendar. And then as we get closer, um, I just, I think that's going to be great. I'm loving it because it's in May. I've been on cruises out of Galveston in January, February timeframe. And y'all, while South Texas is warmer than the rest of the country, it's still chilly and nippy and windy out on the boat. May is just fantastic. So, mm. Diane says she should have two good knees by then. Diane is down in Australia and she, uh, I can glue a wiggly eye. That'd be funny. That'd be funny, Charlene. So uh, Diane went to join me the other day and uh, she said, I tuned in and you're, you were just finishing up. She said, you changed times on me. Yeah, that was me. I changed the time, Diane, right? <laughs> All right. So when did I put in the batting? I put in the batting when I sewed on the backing. Yeah. All right. So I wanted to show you guys how to turn that stitching into embroidery that they want you to do manual stitching. So we're going to do it again on that scrap that I had. You had tech problems, Arliss? No problem. You were there yesterday in the Kimberbell, were you not? I think you were there. You were right. I had forgotten to put down the background fabric. I caught it. You didn't say anything after that, so I didn't know if you got to watch it, but I gave you credit if that was you. Okay, so we have the Hoppy Easter right here, okay, and the eyes. Let's not forget the eyes. The eyes I would do separately just to make sure that they're placed correctly. So you trim the stabilizer and leave the entire piece, size piece. Yeah. Um, I should have showed you guys how I finished that. So I had the top all finished and that was at six and a half. Okay. I trimmed it down to six and a half like it's supposed to be. And then I put, well, I put it on top of the batting and the backing and then trim that. First, I ran it through with the walking foot, got the backing and the batting and the top all together. And then I trimmed it and then I put the binding on. That's how I did it. Oh, I see. All right. So if you just got here late, save the date, May 4 through 11, we're going to do a sew and sail cruise out of Galveston, Texas. No other information than that at this time. Okay. So what you want to do with this, it doesn't have to be the scanning hoop. It can be any hoop that you want. This is a scrap. This is a test that I did before that I'm glad I did a test on because it failed. I'm going to um, take my pattern, okay, and I'm just going to lay it down on top of the hoop. That's all I want to do. Just lay it down. And I'm going to scooch it up by the top of the hoop so the foot does not catch the top of the paper. I'm going to go into my design center. Now, if you've got my design center on a baby, on a brother, any brother machine, even the 10 needle will do this. Or you have IQ design on a baby lock. Okay. Either one of these will work exactly the way I'm going to show you. So you go into my design center and I want to do a scan. So I'm going to touch the leaf for the scan and I want to do line design scan. You get image scan, line design, or illustration. I want to do a line design and I'm going to touch scan and okay. And so it's going to take a picture. The camera is right underneath this white light right here. Okay, right about near that white light so it can see everything. You made enchiladas yesterday? Ooh. 
All right, now let's get into the screen and take a look at this. This is so simple, you guys. When you see how to do this, you'll never hand stitch anything again. <clears throat> now you wanna take your little arrows here and isolate the hoppy Easter with the little grass. So I'm gonna take this and bring this up. That's less you gotta fiddle with to make this better. And then I'm gonna grab this one and bring it down. That'll work. So isolate it as much as you can, okay? And click OK. Let me, it says, uh, I'm going to tell it OK here. Now, I hope you guys can see that all right. I'm going to tell it set because that's what I want. All right. Now I need to erase the parts that I don't want. So I'm going to get my eraser. Let me go back. I want to show you. Up here, this box of tools, there's like a light gray box around it. You can barely see it. These are your drawing tools. And then you've got a stitch type tool right here. And then this gray box, this is all about fills. You have a paintbrush, a paint bucket, and that's where you choose the type of fill. And then down here, not in a gray box, meaning this applies anywhere. You have an eraser and a shape tool. And then size and rotate and all that is all grayed out. So if you touch the eraser, <clears throat> I'm going to make my size a lot bigger. And when I'm doing this, I like to use a square because it gives me a sharp corner point to get in exactly where I need to. I don't like the round. So I'm at about 34 or whatever. I'm going to tell it, okay. You can always go back and edit that. I'm going to get my little thing of a bob that they gave you. And I'm going to make this a lot bigger. So I'm going to, I'm going to go up to this percent right here and I'm going to go to 400% and make it really big, hit the hand. And that allows me to move the screen. Okay. Anywhere I want without affecting anything else. So then I go back to the eraser and then I'm going to take my stylus here and put it on and just erase those parts that I don't want. So you just have to kind of be a little careful, but the bigger you go, the easier it is. And if you leave anything, it will convert that to a stitch. So you got to be careful. Just use the point of that to just get right there. And that works really good. Then I'm going to go to my hand. I'm going to move it over. Okay. That looks good. Untouch the hand. So that reactivates the eraser. See, that square just makes life so much easier. And I'm going to erase this. Go back to my hand. Move it over. Untouch the hand to get rid of what I don't need. It has an undo button too, which is very handy. All right. You notice I'm, I'm tapping it out here. That way I allow the corner of the box to do its thing. You oh, So I went over and I, I accidentally erased part of that. I'm just gonna hit the back arrow and sometimes you want to uh, lift your cursor as much as possible, your stylus as much as possible. That way it doesn't undo everything you just did, only a part of it. See that? I can get that corner right there. That's exactly, that's perfect. And then bring this down. So the square to me is much handier. I need this a little smaller. Okay. I can't see. I have to bend and contort all the time here. All right. I've got a little bit. I need to make it a little bit bigger. I'm going to go up to 800, hit my hand, bring it over. I got to get rid of that. There we go. That's good. Let me go back down to 400. Okay. And now I can... Hit my eraser 
and just get rid of all of this. All right. So that looks really good. I'm going to make it a little bit darker. Oh no, lighter, lighter, lighter. And I want to go back to a hundred and make sure I don't have anything on here that I don't want to convert to stitches. If it turns into stitches, it'll definitely stitch it out on my fabric. And I don't want that. That looks really good. Okay. See, pretty easy. That works good. All right. Now I'm going to hit next. All right. This stylus comes with the Luminaire. You'll get one with, you can also use other ones. They have other ones that are smaller. You can buy that are aftermarket. So if you notice on the screen, when you do this, I've screwed this up more times than I can count. So I want you guys to learn from my mistake. When you do this, notice only one piece of it is highlighted. See how that little bit there is highlighted? Not the whole thing. Okay. You want the whole thing to be highlighted. So you do the whole thing at once. Okay. Let me back out just a tiny bit. Okay. So up here, there's a chain link. You want to touch that and that highlights everything. See how there's red boxes around everything now? Yeah. Y'all, any stylus will work. Yeah, they work. Now what I want to do, don't fiddle with the 100%, but I'm going to fiddle with this 80%. Uh, it says, I say 80, it's 0 0.080. And I'm going to bring it down to the smallest till it knocks at me. And it's 0 0.040. You can do any width that you want. I feel like the 80 is a little chunky. Okay. All right. Are we good? Wouldn't it be cool if I could have an option to pivot the eraser? Yeah, that would be cool. So I'm going to tell it, okay. And it's converting that to be skinnier. That looks really good. All right. As soon as you hit set, it's going to convert this into an embroidery design for use. So I'm just going to hit set. I'm happy with it. Now, if you only did part of it and you get stuck, you can hit the chain links again and go through that process again and it'll select them all. Or if you only want part of it to be thick, you can use these arrows to jump around from piece to piece. I'm going to tell it set. And it says converted to the embroidery pattern and my design center will be exited. Okay. To continue to embroidery edit screen, I'm going to tell it. Okay. And there it is. Now it's an embroidery design. Okay. Uh, Michelle, the M17 on Janome does not have Design Center, but it has something like it. Did, if you, did you get that? That's a big dog. There's my Frito. She just popped in. Okie doke. So I'm just going to hit embroidery. Okay. And it's ready to be embroidered. Hi, baby girl. Good morning. What are you doing? What are you doing, sweet girl? Come here. That's a good girl. Hi, good morning. I have to tell her hello, y'all, or she gets her feelings hurt. Yes, he's a good girl. Yes, you are. Oh, oh, mama giving me love. Yes, oh, sweet baby. Okay, thank you. Don't be a camera hog. <laughs> She's a sweet baby girl. All right. So I want to show y'all. I'm going to take this pattern off. Now... So the way I did this yesterday to put this, see how I got it exactly like they did in the picture? See how I got that exactly like they did in the picture? So what I did was I kind of noticed that this little piece of grass, okay, I moved Hoppy Easter up here. Now, how did, I'm talking about the grass, okay? So the grass, a V, a little bit below the egg. This grass is like a quarter of an inch from egg number two. That's what I got right there, okay? Little, little V, a little bit below the egg, and the grass about a quarter of an inch, and that sits right next to it. And that's exactly what I got right there, okay? See that? So that is, that's what I was after. 
wanted it to look the same. So how do you do that? If your system has a camera or you have the ability like on the Stellar to take a picture of it with your phone and then send it over. That M17 does not have a camera and I don't know why. I saw that thing at the Houston Festival and um, well, hello, Sally's dog. <laughs> Okay. Can you do it on your baby lock Valiant? Yes. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. Yeah, I'm going to show you some cool stuff you can do. Yeah, if you have any baby lock machine that has IQ design or any brother machine that has design center. Okay. All right. So now how you figure out where to put it. Where do I put that design? So I'm going to zoom in here on the screen on this. I want to show you all. On your machine, there's a camera right there. I've got the downward display. I got the camera and then there's a, you can make a video. I don't want to do it. Hit the camera. And I want to hit the scan button. It's scan, background image on and off, close. I'm going to hit scan. And it says it's going to move, so get your hands out of the way. I'm going to tell it okay. So now what it's doing is it's going to take a picture of what it sees in the hoop. You guys that have baby locks, y'all can follow... Go back on this video when it finishes and just, or write these steps down right now, okay? And you're gonna hit the exact same buttons. It's gonna look pretty much the same, okay? All right, so let's zoom in here. On the screen. All right. Well, I don't want that to stitch right there. I think I'm gonna, you can take it and move it where you want and the hoop is moving okay you didn't see that watch the hoop so uh, when you are in embroidery mode versus edit mode if you're in edit the design will move around without the hoop moving once you get into embroidery mode when you touch this and move it see the hoop moving how cool is that Let's say I want it right there. I want that to be able to stitch right on that. Or maybe, let me close it. Maybe I want to turn it. Let me go to layout. And I'm going to ro rotate. And let me rotate 90. No, I went too far. Oh, it's turning it 180. There we go. because I can see on the background. Thank you, Kay, for your super sticker. That's very thoughtful. I appreciate that. Kay popped me a super sticker showing her appreciation for the content. Yeah. There's a dollar sign right below the chat, and that's how you do that, and I appreciate that very much. That helps to uh, keep the channel going, buy fabric, and all those things. You guys are awesome. Carol is taking the plunge and getting the Luminaire 3. Congratulations and add a girl. You will love that. And you're gonna be able to do exactly what I'm doing here. And you are gonna bring so much happiness to your life. <laughs> so all I need to do now is change out my threads because I don't have black thread in there. I need to do that. Where's my good scissors? Uh, today at noon, I'm gonna be stitching another bunny for the Kimberbell mini quilts. So you guys be sure, set your watches, set a timer and join in noon central. And we'll be doing it on the multi-needle, okay? So you multi-needle users, if you need to get familiar with your multi-needle, join me today at noon. If you're not available, there will be, it. Uh, it's available for replay, okay? 
Y'all, please don't be alarmed by the big bruises on me. That's from an IV. I was in the hospital last week from a dog bite. And uh, I got, I was in there for four days. I've got bruises all over me. And I put this Band-Aid on so you guys wouldn't get grossed out by my stitches. They come out tomorrow. Let's see. This came undone. So I'm just going to pull this through. And uh, there we go. Okay. Got a little loop. And so all I need to do now is just put this, I just need to start it. I want to move this and center it on my bunny. That'll work. This is just a sample, you guys. That's all it is, is a sample. So I'm just going to hit the button and go. That's it. And it's going to stitch this out. All right. Uh, if you want lessons for Luminaire or uh, the Solaris, um, Brad Martin is good with the Baby Lock. And uh, there is a channel on YouTube called uh, Just Stitching with the Brother Luminaire. That's a good one. All right. That's good. Yeah, you're getting it local, Car Carol. Good. Okay. So this is it. And I'm not going to stitch out the whole thing because I want to show you guys something else that's very cool with our time we have left. Okay. So I'll stop this in just a second. What did I do with my other hoop? All right. So see, that's what that looks like. And it will just stitch whatever it saw from the pattern. Thank you, Chris. I appreciate the super sticker. That's very nice of you. Thank you so much. That's awesome. All right. Let me back out. You guys are so giving. Thank you so much. Okay. Everybody considers it a cheap class, which is wonderful. All right. So yesterday in my, the Kimberbell that we did where I was stitching the mini quilt, it's, you're a good egg. We did this bunny. Okay. Now I did not put any, yeah, that was just a sample ginger. This is an old sample scrap. I just put it on there. Uh, just to show you guys how it would stitch, okay? The real one that I did is right here. And I put Hoppy Easter at the top and the grass at the bottom where it goes. This is the, the other one was just a sample. I was just showing you guys how you can create the look of hand stitching with an embroidery machine so you don't have to stitch it by yourself. Yes. Okay. So yesterday when I was doing the Kimberbell mini quilt block. I did not do any background stitching on this. Okay. Didn't he turn out cute? My little chocolate bunny. He's adorbs. Oh my gosh. Okay. I want to do some background stipple. Thank you, Flo. That's very thoughtful of you. My sticker. Thank you so much. Okay. I'll put that towards some stabilizer. You're the best. <laughs> so. If you notice what I've done on here, I, let's say you're doing a project and you go, oh, I forgot to put background stitching on it. Dang it. But if you're like Carol and you got a luminaire, okay, this any you can do this in Design Center or IQ Design. This is the Brother 5x7 magnetic hoop. I love this thing. Love, love, love. <clears throat> so what you want to do is go ahead and hoop yourself a piece of mesh stabilizer again. And then the, the window, widow bunny is so cute. Yeah, um, this is reverse applique. That turned out adorable, you guys. Isn't that adorable? Today, the one we're going to do, we're going to stitch the bunny on the lining fabric and then put the fabric, the top fabric on top of that. So it'd be kind of cool. All right. So... 
what you do is you put it on a, on a piece of stabilizer, the block that you forgot, you've already trimmed it and everything, and you forgot to put background stitching, background quilting, okay. You wanna take your paper tape and within a quarter of an inch of the edge, you wanna take that down completely so that the embroidery foot does not get caught underneath. All right, you wanna do that. So let's show you. Thank you so much. How do you say, Moj, Mojax? Is that how you say your name? Mojax5, thank you so much. Oh, you were talking like Elmer Fudd, El Faber. <laughs> Y'all are hilarious. All right, so I'm gonna put this in my embroidery machine. Changed, oh, you know what? Hold on. Let me get out of this. I'm gonna go to home. And are you done? You wanna cancel, I'm gonna tell it okay. I will use a little couple of buttons for eyes. Just call you Mo. Mo? Okay, thank you, Mo. That's very nice. So I wanna change my thread. I'm looking for thread that is pretty much the same color that'll kind of disappear into the fabric and this will work. So that's good. Let me cut that. Okay. And for those who were not here yesterday or missed it, let me show you how I change my threads. I'm going to get real close so you can see. Two French knots for the eyes, Diana. Well, that's a little past my skill set. I know my limitations and I'm okay with them. All right. So I will just use buttons because I, I can't, I can't. Okay. They'll come out looking blobby. So what I do is I take the, the old thread and I let it hang down and I take the new thread and I've got, I put their ends together. So I've got about five inches hanging there. Let me get in super close so you guys can see what I do. Bye, Connie. Enjoy your day. All right. I, I twist them twice so that they think they are one. A black Sharpie for the eyes. Go, Sarah, go. Let me lift this up. Okay. So I twist them twice so they think they're one. All right. And I make a pretty good size loop. And I hold that loop with my thumb, with the Band-Aid. And I take the tails and put it behind the loop and just hang the tails through the center and then I can reach from the front through that big loop and grab the tails. Ta-da. And that's how I do my knot. It's very easy to do that. And it takes no time at all. Okay. And then that's the how I rethread my sergers, uh, all my machines. The multi-needle especially. That thing. Good grief. Okay. And then I'm just going to thread my needle. Ta-da. Okay. I haven't seen Candace Park today. She missed the announcement on the cruise. Okay. So what you want to do now is you're going to go into My Design Center or IQ Design if you're on a baby lock. You're writing the instructions down. Okay, I'll go slow, Sally. So you go into My Design Center and you want to scan the hoop. So I'm gonna touch the leaf up here at the top and I'm gonna tell it image scan and then scan and get your hands out of the way. I'm gonna tell it okay. It's been a minute since I've done this. I hope I'm telling you right. Write it in pencil. You guys are all Elmer fudding out. <laughs> Angela asks, is threading that way better for your machine? That prevents you from pulling the thread backwards, but what it, what it does, thank you, Carol. That's very nice of you. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Very thoughtful. So it just is faster. You know that that thread path is already working because it was working the last time it was threaded that way. It just prevents any kind of misthreading. Thank you, Michelle. Awesome, girl. Awesome. Thank you. Okay. That's my opinion on that. So, 
Oh, Candace is working this morning. Yeah, I know she'll come for a cruise. All right. This is kind of hard to see. Let me make it darker. You can press the leaf buttons up at the top. You have a, a scale there. Let me make it darker so I can see my bunny really well. See that? Thank you, Priscilla. I'm going to be able to get stabilizer and new tape and all that. Thank you guys very much. Is there Irish cream in the kitchen? Kay wants to know. All right, you guys. So here's what you do. You need a shape. So you need to choose a shape is the next step because you need to define the edges of where you want your background stitching to go. So I'm going to touch the shape button down here. Remember I told you guys these are line drawing to tools. These are fill tools. And then you have an eraser and a shape button. So choose your shape. I'm going to choose the square and tell it okay. And the square is much bigger than my design right now. So now, now the size and rotate buttons have become alive. They're not grayed out anymore. I'm making some money this morning. Tina, it's a, it's, it's a cheap class. I love it, right? So I'm going to touch size. And now I want to use the size buttons to, you can, you can, all go in or all go out. Let me get you up close so you can see what you can do on this. I'll get you guys up close. Whoa. All right. You can all sides in, all sides out. You can vertical change, smaller, vertical change, larger. You can horizontally change it smaller or horizontally change it larger or reset. They, this update was done in the XP2 update. So if you have XP1, you won't see this little keypad right here. I, I asked Amy Bachman from Amy Sews. I said, hey, the next time you talk to brother engineers, I've got glare on that. You can't see it. Next time you, got, you talk to brother engineers, I want to be able to specifically tell them how big that number is. And she said, okay, and talk to them. And don't you know, they put it in the XP2 update. Thank you, brother. So I'm going to touch the keypad because I know that my bunny is four and a half inches square. All right. So I'm just right here. Here's your vertical and there's your horizontal. So I'm going to put, let me back out a little bit. Bring it down just a tad so you guys can see. I'm going to tell it 4.50 and hit set. Now it's the right height. And it automatically jumped to the width box. I'm going to put 4.50 set. And now I can take my box and move it exactly where I need it to be. Do you see that? So then you set the size. And then you put, now if you don't know the size, you can just use those scaling buttons and then figure it out and place it and take a wag at it and it'll work. Okay. So this is good. Now I'm going to tell it okay. So now I have the size. Now I need to choose the stitch. Here's your next step. Choose the stitch you want to put as your background quilting. And I'm going to touch the, the stitch button right here. So I will tell you, if you choose this stitch or this stitch, this one opens up another menu, okay? And you can hit select and you can do all of these. All of these double stitch or triple stitch. They don't do a single stitch, which is annoying. I wish brother would allow them to do a single stitch, but they don't, okay? So I'm gonna tell it okay. But when you choose the stipple stitch, you can stitch in a single pass. And that's, that's all that I want. I would love to use those other designs, but they don't do that. So I've chosen the stipple stitch and I'm just going to tell it okay. And then your next step is to tap the paint bucket. All right. So you're filling the paint bucket with your stipple stitch and I'm going to dump it by tapping on the box. And I have created stippling all over on my design. All right. So now I'm going to tell it, um, I want it to get bigger. 
So I'm going to, thank you, Janet, for your sticker. I appreciate that so much. You're very thoughtful. Thank you. So I'm going to touch the percent and I'm going to go up to like 400. I do not want to stitch on my bunny. Now the stippling that you see on here changes once you, I keep looking at you guys to look at the camera when you can't see me. Once you, um, this stippling will change once you dig digitize this, okay? My mouse is in the way here. All right. So I wanna touch the eraser and make it a little bit bigger. Now on this one, I like the round. So I'm gonna tell it okay. And now I'm gonna take my stylus and I'm going to erase on the bunny, just right on the line. I'm gonna erase on the bunny. Anywhere that you leave stippling will convert to stitches. So you gotta be real careful, okay? You wanna get it all, but I'm just gonna erase. You can do this on the 10 needle too. Any of the, anything that's got IQ design or design center. So you wanna erase where you don't want stippling. Get rid of that. I'm gonna to touch the hand and move it down. I really don't want stippling in that egg. Do I? I don't think I do. Whoop, undo my hand. I don't want stippling in the egg. I'm just gonna go around the edge of the egg. Now that I think about it, and just take it around and erase all the stippling. And I'm gonna go up onto his ear. Those of you that were watching yesterday, you can tell I snipped the pleather out of that hole here on the bow. I forgot to um, trim the bunny before I went on to the next step and I stitched the bow on top of it. Again, just about everything. Thank you so much, Debbie. Thank you, darling. I appreciate that. Just about everything in, in embroidery is recoverable. You just have to know what button to push. <laughs> the only thing you cannot recover from is um, when your hoop pops out, pops open. All right. I don't want stitching on my egg. I also don't want any stitching on my little flower that I did. So let me erase the stippling on my flower. Okay. My move it. That's flower number three. There's a flower right here. Erase that. Y'all, this is why these machines are crazy expensive. This is exactly why. Oh, you know what? I have got some stitching around the edge. I don't want stippling over that, that stitch. There's an outline stitch. I don't want stipple on the outline stitch. All right. That looks pretty good. Now, how do you know and make sure you got it all? You use the visibility tool to uh, get rid of the background and you just kind of go, look at that. So look at all that I missed. See, that will show you what you missed. So now you want to go back and clean up what you missed. I don't want stippling in there and I don't want stippling in there. So let's go down to 100%. That looks pretty good. So I got my flowers and my bunny and all of that, okay? <clears throat> all right, I'm finished. See my bunny. I'm gonna tell it next. Now we're gonna talk about the size of the stitching and this is gonna give you a good idea of what the background quilting is gonna look like. So let me get you in here. You can play with this until you get a look that you like. Thank you, Teresa. You're so thoughtful. Thank you so much. There's a spool of thread, you guys. That glide is inexpensive. I love that color and it's, it's inexpensive.
All right. So the one you want to mess with is this 0 0.08. I believe that's the one. Is that the one? Run pitch. No. I'm going to leave it. I think maybe it's this one. Spacing. That's the one you want. So you want to touch the second button. The default is 0 0.2 and touch it. And you want to change it a little bit until you're happy with it. And it will reconfigure the stippling. That looks really good. I like that. Do you guys like that? Back out the camera. Sorry. Oh, there you go. Sorry. Yeah, the one you want to mess with is this one right here. Let me go back. So you have run pitch. You've got these three buttons to fiddle with. You want to fiddle with the second one. Okay. And that is your spacing button. Thank you. I for And you just touch it. So I'm going to 0.212. Okay. Yeah. Tell it okay. And then you can see the stippling. Now it'll give you a really good idea of what that's going to look like. All right. Now this has a solid black line all the way around it. That's going to stitch last. You can get rid of that um, and tell it not to stitch, but I don't remember exactly how to do that. So you, you can just stop the machine. I'm going to tell it, let me see here. I touch that. Nope. Where, what do we got here? So that's, I'm not even going to fiddle with that. I'm just going to tell it set. It says converted to an embroidery pattern. My design center will be exited. So we just did all the digitizing in the machine. I'm going to tell it okay. And it's ready to go. Now, again, now is when you want to. So the next step is to scan what's what's in the hoop so you touch your camera and tell it scan it's going to say okay now we haven't gone into the embroidery yet so this is going to be different i want to show you guys remember i told you before on that other one the hoop was moving around can you do this in stitch artist yeah you can no you can't because your design's already created I mean, I guess, no, you can't. And the only reason you can't is because of scale. Hit the like button. Yeah, Kathy, not a girl. <clears throat> so this is exactly placed where it needs to be because I didn't mess with the hoop or anything. It's exactly where it needs to be. See that? And then if you have got... You can do this, you bet you. If you've got a Luminaire or a Solaris, okay, I'm gonna tell it close. Hold on a second, I'll tell you, I'll finish my thought in a second. See how you've got these two stitches? There's your embroidery. There's your little background stippling. That is the outside. The second one is the outside line. I don't want that. I'm gonna tell it, let me jump through here. Let's see. It won't let me select. It won't let me, it won't let me select or ungroup. I'm gonna tell it okay, I'm just gonna leave it. I'm just not gonna stitch that second stitch. Thank you, Carl. Are you, are you using, or Carrie? I'm sorry, I couldn't see. Thank you, Carrie. I called you Carl, Eddie. Carrie, you're a sweetheart, thank you. My apologies, I'm messing up your name earlier. Could you do this with the Halloween? files on that Amy Bradley. You can, if you've got this machine, absolutely you can. For the stip, you'd have to stipple the whole thing. Yeah, you can. But Designs by Juju is creating background stitching for this, that quilt. So, and it won't be very expensive. It'll be worth it. Touch the color, then select no sew. All right. Touch the color. Where's no sew? Help me out. Touch the black thread will not let you delete. No, it doesn't let you delete it. I can't. So I'm going to tell it okay. Let me go into edit. 
Um, here's the no sew button. Let me see. It's got the bunny highlighted, the black. I don't know what's highlighted. See, it won't let me choose between the stippling. Thank you, Sally. You're very thoughtful. Thank you so much. Yeah, don't worry about it, you guys. There's always another way around John's barn. It's fine. So I'm just going to click embroidery. Oh, what do you mean change to a larger embroidery frame? Hold on. What do you mean change to a larger frame? It's in a five by seven. It fits. Hold on. 4.57 by 4.57. This is a five by seven hoop. Embroidery. Oh, for crying out loud. Hold on a minute. Why is it telling me? That is annoying. Oh my word, that's annoying. There's no reason for that. Let me unhoop and rehoop. Brother, five by seven frame. This is 4.57 by 4.57. There's no reason. Ugh. Okay, fine. You want to be that way? Fine. Let's be that way. Annoying? No end. Saving that in the machine. Okay, I saved that embroidery pattern in the machine, you guys. I am not taking this lying down. Y'all, I don't like it when stuff happens like that. I don't like that. I don't like it when software doesn't work the way it's supposed to. I don't like it when my embroidery machine gives me attitude at all. Okay. I've got a six by 10 magnetic here. That is so annoying. But I have a luminaire, so I can overcome this. This will be fine. It happens to you all the time. No, it's fine, El Faber. It's not you. Don't you worry about that. Every once in a while. But you know what? When this happens, you go, okay, how can I fix it? It's probably that hoop. It's a brother hoop. There's no reason. So now we're in a six by 10. Let's see what, what it does. I'm going to tell it embroidery. Oh, I'm going to scan again. And that's crazy because it scanned that hoop and everything. I just don't understand. Yeah, well, I'll switch to a larger hoop. I just don't like the attitude from the machine. All right, now I got to get this exactly on okay the hoop's going to move because i'm in a, um i think the hoop is going to move no it's not let me get it exactly where i want it that looks good i don't have any stitching on the flowers let's go to embroidery i'm going to go to layout and Rotate gives you both. If you, when you're on layout, if you hit move, you just get move buttons. If you hit rotate, you get rotate and move buttons. Okay. And I'm going to tap this down just a little bit and over. Nope. I'm looking at this flower right here. That'll work. Tell it okay. And if you have the Solaris or the Luminaire, now I can finish my thought, you can touch this little cone and it'll give you a downward display of the design. 
on your fabric. And you can see, oh wow, let me get y'all in here. Look at that. Okay. I want to make sure that there's no stitching that's going to stitch on that end of that yellow flower. So I'm going to, on the screen, on the screen, I'm going to turn you over here to the screen. I'm going to grab this red box and I'm going to move it down a little bit. Okay. And then make sure here. Yep. No stitching on my flower. It's almost, so I'm going to nudge it over a little bit with my nudge buttons on the screen. That looks great, you guys. Okay. Oh, hold on. I don't want any stitching on my bunny. Okay, that looks good. Yep, that looks good. Yeah, the light on the design is amazing. That's why they call it a luminaire. I'm gonna tell it okay. We're ready to go. Do your thing. And again, be sure to put your paper tape within a quarter of an inch because when you pull it off, it's hard to, it doesn't like to come out. Yeah, it's projecting the stitching. That, that is the whole thing with the Luminaire and the Solaris. It's amazing. Well, hi, Carol. I'm glad you're here in a live stream. You're at sea on the Discovery Princess. Nice. Good for you. Okay. We're about ready to finish up here, but this is awesome. This is how you do background stitching after the fact when you forgot. Or maybe you don't have any. Maybe you bought. Thank you very much, Marlene. You're very thoughtful. Thank you. Look at that. The magic of Design Center and IQ Design. Yep. Thumbs up, you guys. Ta-da, it's finished. Okay, remember I told you I couldn't get rid of that, that second stitch? I'm not going to stitch it. I'm done. Just pull a hoop. Can the PR 1055 10 needle project a design? It, has, it cannot. Um... No, but it has the ability to, with the camera to scan and you can see and place it exactly where you want. There it is, you guys. I've got background quilting now on my block. Yay! Yay! Where do I put the embroidery thread? On the top of the machine? Uh-oh. Sue says she feels a major purchase coming on. Listen, y'all. Google on my 1099 says that I'm an online influencer. That's my new job. So <laughs> mission accomplished. <laughs> this is so fun. I have made tote bags where I didn't have any background stitching. And I thought, you know what? I really need to do that. And it's, it's neat. You can hoop like on a tote bag, you can hoop part of the tote bag stitch that with the stipple. And then what I do is I take the paper tape and I run it right down the edge of the stipple where it finished. And then I hoop the bag again, the other part of it, and make sure with the camera that I'm not overlapping the previous stippling. And I do the same thing again. So you can even do it on a finished project. It's great. You can do it on a much larger project. You just do it's the same idea as clear blue tiles. You just make these nested to the point that they don't look like there's a gap. That's how you do it. Yeah. You are welcome. Flo says, thank you. Thank you. You are welcome. You guys use your machines. They've got these wonderful tools. Uh, you know, it, they're, they're just awesome. And a lot of you are just sewing on them or you're doing basic embroidery. But when you get a design, like if you're going to be making, where is it? You know, you're going to be making the, um, say you're making the Kimberbell Cuties mini quilts with us. Well, you know, you have to invest in the, you don't have to invest in the fabric. You can source your own fabric, but you invest in the fabric. 
You might invest in the embellishment kit because these are always fun and they have the best stuff. But then you want the background quilting and you're like, holy moly, you know, use what you've got in your fancy machines. If you have a luminaire, two full pages in your Becky notebook today. Yay, Beth. Good for you. Y'all do it in pencil because I always make mistakes and have to go back. Good. I'm glad you enjoyed that. So this is called Digitized Hand Stitching on the Brother XP or Baby Lock Solaris. I'll change up the title to uh, Create Background Quilting with Stipple. Okay. Awesome. All right, you guys. Our hour is past. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and uh, leave a comment below if you learned something or if you didn't or if you've got a tip on how I can do something or you want to see something else. Be sure to leave a comment below the video and I will do what I can to figure it out if I don't know how already and show you guys. Okay. All right. Join me today, March uh, 14th at noon. And we are going to do another block on the Kimberbell mini quilt. I'll be on the multi needle and I'm going to show you how to do applique on the multi-needle and I will demo this technique that I just did with the background stippling also on the multi-needle. So uh, take a look at it. Yes, it's pie day. And so that's why we've got three or four different pies. I brought pecan. It's in the kitchen. Y'all enjoy it. All right, you guys, we will talk to you soon. Go sew something. Bye.